Hello ladies and gentlemen to the very first episode of Seraph's Reality. This will be a channel where I talk about pretty much whatever I want, whether it be manga, anime, video games, movies, TV shows, comics, etc. I'm a varied individual with a variety of interests, and this channel will accommodate just that. So, today I'll be tackling a topic I've dealt with multiple times on multiple occasions. Dimensions. You know, that thing you learn in grade school math class. We'll be looking at those that we know exist in our world, and the higher tiered ones we use in fictional verses. Oh yeah, and disclaimer, this video will contain spoilers for the following series. And yes, I am aware that most of these are quite old, but this is just a fair warning so I don't have to hear anyone crying about spoilers in the comment section below. Now, before I begin, it's important to note that this is a system for fictional verses without any established dimensional system. In other words, this is for verses that were not outright stated or confirmed to work on super string theory, M theory, bosonic string theory, or some other dimensionality system. We'll start simple. First up is, fittingly enough, the first dimension. The first dimension is length, about as simple as one being can get. Being 1D makes you have length and nothing more. You're a line on a separate, longer line, and you can only move in two different directions along said line, forwards and backwards. Pretty dull life if you ask me, so let's move on to something a bit more exciting. Next up is the second dimension. The second dimension is height. While being 2D, you have both length and height, and can be much more than what a 1D being is. If you've ever seen a drawing, watched something on TV, or played a video game, then congratulations, you've bore witness to a 2D creation. Superman, Goku, and Mario are all characters that are also 2D creations relative to our reality, because they only have length as well as height, and they can only be seen through pages and screens. Although 2D beings are restricted to the world of fantasy, our next dimensional tier has no such restriction. Next, the third dimension. This is the dimension we're most familiar with as we all fall under this category. While 2D objects have length and height, 3D have those two characteristics with an extra one, depth. Something with depth alongside height and length gives us a third dimensional being and or object. Whatever is around you is third dimensional, and even you, yourself, the listener, are a 3D being, able to move in a third dimensional space. In terms of fictional verses, there are countless 3D beings. Monkey D. Luffy, Uzumaki Naruto, and Kurosaki Ichigo of the Holy Shonen Trio are all 3D. Mario and Superman are usually 3D. As well as even a basic slime from Dragon Quest is third dimensional. It's important to note that these characters are 3D relative to their verse and not relative to our reality. Judging them based on what we observe in relation to our reality would automatically make any and all fictional characters stuck to the second dimension, because that's exactly what they are, two-dimensional creations on paper and screens. The next dimensional tier is where we start getting more complex, the fourth dimension. First, we need to establish the definition of space-time. Space-time is any mathematical model that fuses the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time into a single four-dimensional continuum. Simply put, the universe is a fourth-dimensional construct made up of space-time. To better understand this, I'll present you with an analogy. Imagine our universe as a box. This box is a 4D construct as it's made up of space-time. As 3D beings, we are all stuck inside of it as well as every single other 3D construct. From you yourself, to the food you ate today, to the neighbor next door, we are all forced to follow its laws and unable to interact with it. Those that can interact with the construct of this box slash universe are 4D, as they are able to directly interact with space-time and are therefore infinitely beyond anything we 3D beings can do. Let's look at a few examples of 4D beings. Exhibit A, God of the Underworld Hades. Hades is the god of the underworld and he created and is sustaining Elysium, Hell, and arguably the hyperdimension that is in between, considering he said everything when he stated what would fall following his death. The fact that the hyperdimension acts as a passageway between Elysium as an entirely separate space-time continuum where space-time is being distorted indicate Hell and Elysium are separate space-time continuums, creating not one, but two, and potentially three separate space-time continuums is inarguably worthy of being in the 4D category. Exhibit B. Photoshop Flowey. First, we need to establish saves being separate timelines slash universes. This is established during the Sands fight. He says, and I quote, Our reports showed a massive anomaly in this time-space continuum. Timelines jumping left and right, stopping and starting, until suddenly, everything ends. <laughs> That's your fault, isn't it? He's referring to how the player creates, loads, and deletes save files. In this quote, 
He essentially confirms that each save equates to a singular timeline slash universe. Now, let's look at the Photoshop Flowey fight. Now that Flowey has absorbed six human souls, he gains the ability to save, load, and even erase saves. These are clear 4D feats as he's directly messing with the many 4D space-time continuums. Exhibit C, Infinite Zamas. As I've established earlier in this video, the universe is a fourth dimensional construct made up of space-time. In episode 67 of Dragon Ball Super, after getting killed by Trunks, Zamas became what we call Infinite Zamas. During the process of becoming this quote-unquote Infinite Zamas, Gawas states that Zamas is becoming one with the universe, or even the universe itself. Becoming one with the universe is becoming one with a fourth dimensional construct. This naturally makes you fourth dimensional as well. However, there are important exceptions to this ability to interact with space-time equating to being 4D rule of thumb. Case in point, Kujo Jotaro and Dio Brando. Both of them can manipulate space-time via time stop. However, they themselves are still third-dimensional beings. They simply have 4D abilities via an external source, namely their stands. Another exception to the rule is a certain character that can affect slash interact with the fourth dimension but they themselves are still third dimensional, that being Superman. Most of the time Superman is a 3D being but that has not stopped him from affecting the fourth dimension in his multiple incarnations. In the storyline Superman Where Is Thy Sting, post-crisis Superman fell into a black hole and had to push through some space time to punch through death. Before the events of Infinite Crisis, we saw Superboy Prime's punches affect the entirety of the multiverse on a fourth dimensional scale, changing major events, including causing the resurrection of Jason Todd. Later, during the actual events of Infinite Crisis, we have narration statements that confirm both post-crisis Superman and pre-crisis Earth-2 Superman were shattering space-time as they fought, and as a result, they could see each other's histories. Despite these 4D feats, we know he's third dimensional as kryptonite itself is a third dimensional material that affects him, among other reasons. Now, to go even higher. <laughs> the fifth dimension. Here we get conceptual. We have no idea what the fifth dimension is. All we know is that it's obviously beyond the fourth dimension, i.e. space-time. This means that any character that has existed, moved, and or acted outside slash beyond space-time, or as many series puts it, time, are considered 5D, as they are utterly beyond and independent to any space-time continuum and the laws it has. Now, time to look at a couple of examples. Exhibit A, Monica. At the end of Act 2 of the game, Monica erases the entire game's multiverse, and this was proven when the protagonist attempts to fast forward the game, but to no use. She says that because time doesn't exist anymore, the fast forward feature is ineffective. She is existing, moving, and acting beyond a fourth dimensional construct, boundless by its laws. Therefore, fifth dimensional Monica. Exhibit B, Kaname Madoka. At the end of Puella Magi Madoka Magica, Madoka wishes away the concept of witches in all of the timeline slash universes the multiverse contains. This resulted in her becoming so powerful, she was no longer an entity that was in the universe and began existing outside of it as a fifth dimensional being. Also important to note, Chapter 5 of Maho Shoujo Homura Tamura confirms that the Puella Magi verse has infinite universes slash timelines, so that confirms she has multiversal plus range. What's interesting here is that although she became a 5D being, she lost the ability to interact with 3D beings and or constructs, as she became so ungodly powerful. This could be paralleled with our inability to create or interact with anything one-dimensional. No matter how much we try to draw a one-dimensional line, it'll always have height, which means it'll always be a two-dimensional line. One noteworthy trait of 5D beings is that, because they are beyond the laws of space-time, they are above concepts such as distance and time, making the equation, velocity equates to distance divided by time, completely irrelevant and obsolete to them, as they are far above such silly formulas that our 3D minds came up with. Of course, like any rule, there are exceptions. Let's look at the Nasu verse, for example. More specifically, one Kishir Zelrich Schweinorg. Mr. Zelrich here has control over the second magic, Kaleidoscope, and this allows him to travel to these parallel worlds. Now, to establish something about the Nasuverse, 
Usually, timelines and universes are interchangeable terms as a universe is a 4D space-time continuum. However, in the Nasuverse, parallel worlds or universes have infinite timelines. This was shown in Fadic Stella material in the Quantum Time Lock section of page 105. I'll be using the Chinese translation as it's the best quality scan that I could find, but nevertheless, the important part of the section is right here. The part translates directly to, this universe allows unlimited possibilities. This is in reference to the extra, quote-unquote, world. We also see this in regards to the Fate Grand Order world, thanks to the description of Saber Musashi's Empyrean Eyes. In the description, it states, You might as well say that this is an extremely unique set of mystic eyes, which confines the naturally infinite futures into just a single result thus confirming the infinite amounts of universes slash timelines. And we know that Extra and Grand Order are separate worlds because the Fate Extra visual fanbook shows on page 79 that the Extra world is its own world carrying its own infinite timelines. And Nasu himself confirms that Grand Order is its own world by stating how the Tsukihime world is a world where Grand Order did not happen. This kicks everything up a level and makes every quote-unquote parallel world its own multiverse containing infinite timelines. With the ability to travel between these 5D multiverses, Zelretch's kaleidoscope is 5D, even if he himself is still a third dimensional being. And now the sixth dimension and beyond. The characters that we consider 6D are, obviously, those that exist on a higher plane of existence than 5D beings and or are unfathomably above the comprehension of said 5D beings. 7D is the same thing just with 6D beings and so on and so on and so on. That about does it for this episode of Ceres Reality. I hope you liked it, and if you did, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, as well as clicking the notification bell to be notified about new episodes when they arrive. I'm Seraph, and I'll see you lovely people next time.